I'm ready, Earl. Ready? Yeah. The views expressed on this program are not those of intellectualradio.com, its subsidiaries, or sponsors. Encouraging, educating, and empowering you into action. This is Warriors Talk with your host, Lady Rochelle. Hi, you guys. Lady Rochelle here, author and founder of Warriors Talk, where we move away from awareness towards action. I am live on Intellectual Radio. You guys, we have a good topic today. It is help. I'm in love with a narcissist. So I'm excited about the topic today. Do me a favor, like, share the show, invite others in on the show. Go get your tea so we can get down to the show. All right. We just heard Roman. He always has some amazing guests on the show. So I'm so excited about him and his show. So do me a favor, you guys, go ahead, like and share the show. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about my sponsors, which is Emmanuel Church of God in Christ which is my pastor, it's his birthday today. And we are still practicing social distancing. You can go to our Facebook page, which is Emmanuel Kojic at 1015 every Sunday morning. And you can hear a word from God. We also have Allstate with Paula Kelly. She's located at 321 East Glenwood Lansing Road in Glenwood, Illinois. She could be reached at 708-758-3300. And our quote for today is, what you allow is what you will continue. So again, our topic for today is help. I'm in love with a narcissist. So we're going to first go ahead and tell you what a narcissist is. And you will be surprised. So a narcissist is a person who has an excessive interest in or admiration for themselves. And I'm sure we all know somebody who exemplify these qualities. And a person who is a narcissist, actually, they have to have five of the qualities in order to be diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. And we're going to go over some of the signs and symptoms so you can determine if you are in love with a narcissist. And so let me just do my disclaimer because... Um, I was in a five-year relationship with a narcissist, but I didn't know that he was a narcissist until the relationship was over. I just knew that there were some strange things going on, and um, I knew all of it wasn't my fault. So um, once the relationship was over, I kept hearing the word narcissist. And when I went to look it up and I looked at all the signs and symptoms, I said, yep, he is a narcissist. So 70, 75% of women, a men actually are narcissists and 25% of women are narcissists. So narcissists, they normally are men, but don't, don't exclude the women because 25% of them are women. So let's get down to the signs and symptoms of a narcissist. So the first one is they talk about themselves all the time. So if you're with somebody who is constantly talking about themselves all the time, they're a narcissist. 
if when you have a conversation, they do not let you get a word in edgewise and everything always comes back to them, then you may be in love with a narcissist. And then the next one is they have, they fantasize a lot. So they fantasize about them having big things all the time. It could be anything from their car to their house to even the person that they're dating. They just have to have the best of the best. And so sometimes their fantasies can be like out of this world. So number three is they believe that they are superior. So they believe that they are better than most of the people and they only really like to be around people who are just like themselves. They feel like nobody else can relate to them unless they are just like them. So they have these feelings of superiority and in order for them to keep those feelings, they have to have people around them to what? Boost their ego. So number four is they require constant praise. And that's what having people, having people around you all the time. And it depends on what type of people. If you don't have like yes people around you, but you have if you have yes people around you, they're going to agree with everything you say. But if you have people around you that's going to hold you accountable and tell you the truth, then you won't have this flated ego, right? So a narcissist requires constant praise. They want somebody to always tell them that they're doing a good job, that whatever it is that they're doing, that they're on the top of their game. So if you're with a narcissist and you're not constantly praising them, then they're probably going to end up getting rid of you. So number five is they have a sense of entitlement. They just feel like people should be giving them things and things belong to them. And if you have something, then they feel like you should just automatically give them something. They don't want to have to pay for it. You know, they don't want they don't even want to have to ask you for it because they feel like, you know, look at me. I'm, I'm this person who is superior to everybody. So everybody should be giving me things. I shouldn't have to go around and ask. So if you were a narcissist, if you are in love with a narcissist then you already know, they have a sense of entitlement. Number six is they take advantage of others. They are always trying to figure out ways to take advantage of you. No matter what it is that you are going through, they're going to make sure that they're on top. And you're always going to be the lowest on the total pole when it comes to them. We know that they are most of the people who are narcissists, they're very attractive, they're charismatic, they're exciting. And normally they get jobs where they have to have a lot of people around them. So, you know, they could be maybe a basketball player. They could be a singer, just where they have to have people around them constantly. So, you know, if they're not dating anybody or in love with anybody, they still will have people singing their praises. Number seven is they are envious of others. And I know this sounds funny because even though they have this flated ego, you would think that hmm, they wouldn't be envious of other people, but they are. They are envious of other people. And if they feel like you have things that they should have because they're superior, they're the superior one, then they are going to be envious of you. And guess what? You are not going to be in their circle too long because they want to be the main person in the circle. They don't want to have to compete with anybody else in their circle. So if you are in a circle where there's a narcissist, then guess what? You will not be in that circle for too long. So number eight is they enjoy because they enjoy being the center of attention. If they are not the center of attention, they do not want to be there. And it's mainly all about really control. They really want to be in control of everything. They want to be the main person that everybody goes to. They want to be the person who has the most information in the crowd. They, they want to be that main person. And if they are not, then guess what? They don't want to be there. They do not want to be there. Um, Deanna says she was married to one, a grandiose narcissist person. See, they exist. And like I said, when I was in a relationship, I didn't know that he was a narcissist. It was so many things that he was doing. And I felt like he was trying to mold me and train me into a certain, a certain way. And, you know, I, I fought it. And that's why we didn't laugh because... I fought it all the way. So, you know, they don't want to be with anybody that they can't control. They don't want to be with you if you're going to fight them. They want 
people, they want you to submit. And I'm not against submitting, but it's to a certain extent. The, the type of submitting that they want you to do, you lose yourself. You lose yourself entirely. So number nine is they have a lack of empathy. You could be going through all type of trouble in your life. And they, they're not going to care. You could be telling them, pouring your heart out. <laughs> they just go look at you and be like, okay, you, you are right. You're going to get over it. They're not going to sit and offer any solutions. They not, they're not. They're just going to sit there and listen to you. Why? Because it does not involve them. It has nothing to do with them. Those are your issues. So they're not going to have a lack of empathy for you. They're just going to they'll listen, but they're not going to get involved. And if you ask them, they're going to give you. So if you ask them, hey, I need help. You know, I'm having these issues. They're going to give you a lecture. And then the lecture, like they're not going to give it to you freely. It's going to come with some type of strings attached, whatever it is that they have to do for you. It's going to come with some type of strings attached. So number 10 is boundless ambition. So they have these really big goals. And sometimes the goals are, and it's okay to have goals. Let me just say, it's okay to have goals. It's okay to, you know, have goals that are bigger than you, but their goals are like way out there. And they feel like, you know, because they are the superior one that they can have these goals. So they fantasize about being the best of the best. Number 11 is they are incredibly insecure and you wouldn't think so because at the beginning I mentioned that they were they were confident, right? They have this this confidence, they have this big ego, but they are really insecure and you won't know that they're insecure until you really just pay attention to them. You kind of like if you're in a relationship with them, you can observe them and you'll be able to pick up on them being insecure. I could give you an example. Um, so the guy I was with one day, we was having a conversation with some of his friends and the guy was talking about going to college or something like that. So he started asking me questions about school. And so my boyfriend gave me a look and I know what that look meant. That look meant don't don't get into a conversation with this person. He didn't want the, he didn't want me to get into a conversation with the guy because it will make him look less than a man because he doesn't, he didn't, I have a college, I have two college degrees. He didn't have any. So he didn't want me to go. He didn't want me to say anything. It was like, don't open your mouth. And I knew what that look meant. Why? Because he already had trained me. So whenever we would go out with his friends because of the type of job that he did, and I really don't want to say, because if he's listening, he'll know that I'm talking about him. <laughs> what did she say? The long hours and I was a lecture. Yes, Deanna, I'm telling you, they will lecture. They will lecture your head off. They, they always they, they're always right. You're never right. They're always right. So if you get into an argument, the best thing to do is just, just let them talk, let them get it out. And because you're not going to win. Now, if you're not planning on being with them and you just want to argue, then argue. But at the end of the day, you're wasting your breath because you're not going to win. You're not. So they're real insecure. They're insecure about you. They're insecure about the people around you. And like I said, when I used to go out with him, I would just really be quiet. Like I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't get in a conversation with him and his friends. I would just kind of like, you know, be on my phone. So, you know, I wouldn't make eye contact with them because I didn't want them to drag me in the conversation. Now, if he said something to me, then I would say something. But if he didn't say anything to me, then I wouldn't talk. I wouldn't get in the conversation. So that's how he had me trained, right? So he was really insecure in that way to where he don't want to hear your opinion. Your opinion does not matter. It, you don't know what you're talking about. Why? Because he is the smart one in the relationship. Or she, because it could be both, men and women. So number 12 is they are charming. When I say they are charming, they would charm the pants off of you. So people wouldn't even think that they are this way because they are so charming. And when they're around people, if you ask anybody ab about them, they'll say, oh yeah, oh yeah, she's a good girl. Yeah, she's a good a good woman. Oh yeah, he's a good guy. Because they charm the pants off of everybody around them. But you know the truth because you're with them. Mental controls, exactly. Mental controls. And, and for some reason, I don't know if they sit back and they study this, but they're good at it. They know exactly what to do, what to say to get you to act in the way that they want. So as far as being charming, 
Oh, that's how they got you. They was charming. They turned the pants off of you. So you just have to, you have to really pay attention because with a narcissist, everything moves so fast. They move so fast. You'll be like, oh man, I just found my soulmate. Like I am so in love. Everything is just flowing so smoothly with him. You know, he's leaving you notes and, you know, just buying you stuff. Everything is just so smooth with this person because he's manipulating you or she's manipulating you into what they're getting ready to do to you. So you just got to be careful. And I'm so, I'm so serious. Elaborate schemes. Yes. You, it, it's so much, so much drama that goes on with a narcissist, somebody that has been diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. There's so many things that goes on with them. And they're the type of person that they're going to deny everything. They're going to deny it and they're going to blame it on you. So you're going to be the blame for everything. Number 13, they are extremely competitive. You, they are competitive. Why? Because they want to be number one. They are superior. They feel like they're much better than everybody else. So they're competing, but it may be secretly. You may not know that they are actively competing with you, but they are obsessed with winning. It's only two two things to them. You either win or you lose. And a narcissist is not losing. They're going to win at all costs. They don't care. They're going to win. So you have to watch out. Don't do anything that you don't want them to do to you because they hold grudges. A narcissist hold grudges. And even though you may apologize, because guess what? They're not going to apologize to you. Whatever it is that they did, they are not going to say they sorry. You want to find yourself saying you sorry for something that they did. So they have this thing called gaslighting where they try to make it seem like you're crazy. And you start to thinking like, wow, did, did I really do that? Was it something that I did that caused it? And you actually sit there and you will apologize to this person and they'll turn it around on you because they are not saying they're sorry. They're not taking the blame because they didn't do anything wrong. You're the one with the problem. Number 15 is they don't take criticism well. You better not criticize, do not criticize them. They they take it as a personal attack. If you say something, if you criticize them or try to critique them or something, they're going to take it as a personal attack on them. Like you're attacking them and they're not going to like it. And they're not going to have you in their circle long. They don't, they don't want people around them that's going to critique them and tell them when they're wrong or if you could do something better. You know, do it this way. You could do it better. You know, you can have, do it faster this way. They don't want to hear that because their way is the best way. They will get back at a person at any cost, no matter the length of time. They will take that grudge to their grave. You will think that they forgot about it. Oh no, honey, they ain't forgot about it. They will take that, they will take that grudge to their grave. And you will turn around and be like, wow, so they got me back. So that's how you're gonna be. Yep. So you can't even just don't, don't even try to um get them back. Just, you know, let karma do it. Just move on. So I just gave you the 15 signs and symptoms of somebody who was diagnosed with, um, they call it NPD, which is um, narcissistic personality disorder. And a person, again, they only have to have five of those symptoms. I gave you 15. I think it was a little bit more than that. They only have to have five of those to be diagnosed with that. So, and the reason why they diagnose the people get diagnosed with that one is because those are the ones who are adamant about not um, getting any help for you know narcissism. So they normally would diagnose them with that. So if you are just tuning in, this is Lady Rochelle with Warriors Talk. We're live on Intellectual Radio, and we are talking about help. I'm in love with a narcissist, and I just went over um, 15 signs and symptoms to let you know if you are in love with a narcissist and sometimes we're in relationships and we don't know um, what's going on in the relationship and why this person is treating us this way, um, why they respond to us this way. I can remember a time um, they'll get you with the silence, right? So if you do something that they don't like or if they, if they told you not to do it, then they will go silent on you. And when they go silent on you, it's their way of taking control back. Because now you have the control because you told them, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, no, I want to do it this way. And they're like, okay. So they will go silent on you 
And then what happened is they are not going to contact you. <laughs> Deanna says, run, run, run from a narcissist. I'm serious. They, they, you have, if I don't want to, if you're married, I don't want to tell you to run. If you're married, if you want to stick it out, both of y'all got to get some help. The both of you have to get some help. And the narcissist ain't getting help. You know why? Because they don't think that they have a problem. Monique says, yes, girl. They don't think that they have a problem. You better not go to a narcissist and say, hey, I think that you're a narcissist. You know, you're going to get punished. They are going to punish you for that. I'm telling you, they will punish you for that. When I talk about the silent treatment, they will give you that silent treatment. And what they're doing is the silent treatment is taking control back. And then they're waiting for you to come to them because you're going to be the one to come to them because it happened to me. I don't, I don't even remember what I did to the father's person, but I didn't hear from him for like three or four days. And I'm like, OK, normally we I hear from him every day, every day. We together every day. I'm like, what is really going on? So I ended up calling him like, hey, what's up? And he was like, nothing. What's up with you? I was like, nothing. He was like, I was like, um, you know, are we still together? Well, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to call you when I'm ready. OK, I was like, what was that all about? He was training me. He knew if he let enough time go by because he had already they call it love bombing. He had already love bombed me. So he had already, you know, showered me with all of this affection. So I'm like, you know, wait, what's going on? How are you just going to stop? They'll give you that silent treatment. And they'll pull back because they know that you're going to come to them. They know you're going to come to them. OK, so we gave you the 15 signs and symptoms. Now, here are some common phases that a narcissist use in a relationship. And the first one that I talked, I just mentioned it, love bombing. So love bombing is they're going to overwhelm you with love and affection. They're going to wine and dine you. Like I said, you're going to be like, oh, wow, I just found my soulmate. This is a person I've been waiting for. And it's going to go fast. Like everything's going to go real fast. They're going to make sure that everything is moving fast. Why? so that you won't get a chance to be the wiser. They're going to make sure that everything goes really fast. I can remember, um, it was like, I think we ended up meeting and then like, it might've been more than two months. Like they're going to, they're going to, they're going to relationship you up like less than three months, probably faster than that, because they want to make sure that you you stand in that, lump, that love bombing stage. So they're bombing you with all the love that they can. And they don't really mean it. It's just that it's their form of manipulation. They're trying to man manipulate you so that, you know, they're setting a the stage for you. They're setting a the stage so that when they decide to um, go to the next phase, and then once they go to the next phase, then you don't, you don't even know what hit you. <laughs> The next phase is after the love bombing stage. So remember, the love bombing stage is they're giving you all the affection. You're getting all the affection, all the attention. They're with you all the time. You know, they're constantly texting you, calling you. And you're like, wow, like I ain't never had this in a relationship, right? Then you get to the defect, the devalue phase. They're going to devalue you, which means they're going to put you down. They're going to start criticizing you, um, any and everything that you do. Because now they, they got you hooked now. They already got their hooks in you. They done already showed you everything, you know, the, how they so-called. Well, they're never going to say the words. They're never going to say, I love you. You're never going to hear that, right? Because they're going to say, I do it with my actions. Like, I, I just showed you. I, I was doing all of that with my actions. What do you mean, do I love you? I, I just, I've been texting you and taking you out, you know, so they're never going to. And then if you ask them, you know, do you love me? You know, they still, they're not going to tell you that. Why? Because they only love themselves. A narcissist is all about self. They love themselves. It's all about self-love, which self-love is good. But theirs is to a point to where it's, it's sickening to where they have to be diagnosed. They have to be diagnosed with a disorder, with a personality disorder, because something went dysfunctional in them that made them only wants to think about self and to use people in the process. And to the next one is to discard people. So once they have used you, they love bombed you and they manipulated you and they got you where they wanted you to be. They got you to a spot to where they can get you to do pretty much anything that they want. And if you're fighting them, if you are back talking them and you're disagreeing with them or you're questioning them, 
they're going to disregard you. And they already have somebody else in place for you. So a narcissist don't, they don't get rid of you until they have somebody else in place. So they're going to already have somebody in place before they get rid of you. So they're not going to discard you until they have somebody in place. And they, even though they discard you, they may come back to you. So sometimes a discard is just punishment because you are not cooperating. And they figure like, if you're asking all these questions, then you probably going to figure them out. You're going to figure out what they're doing. And they like, "Mm -mm." okay, so now they're going to have to reset you. So they discard you because they either they're going to um, leave you alone together or they're going to reset you and then they're going to come back and now you got to start from square one so that's that's what happened to me we ended up breaking up for like a year and then we got back together and let me tell you do not get back together with a narcissist because they will make you pay you they will make you pay worse than you did the first time so do not go back don't go back you know as deanna said run run as fast and hard as you can. And I would say, if you just cut off connection, don't even, just do them the same way, the silent treatment. Don't just cold turkey, just go, just go. Because if if they talk to you again, then you, you're you gonna fall right into their traps. You're gonna fall right into their traps. So I would say, just just run fast as you can. Now, if you have kids with this person and y'all got to have some type of connection, then okay, you know, that's fine. Then you you have that connection with that person, but you don't have to necessarily have that love connection. I mean, the love is one way because they not love you. You love them. So you don't have to have that connection. Just, you know, get out of the way. Um, Monique says, date a man, dated a man in his 20s who was much, much older than me. And he was infamous for giving me the silent treatment. Girl, what they do it when he was angry with something I did or when something I said or did. He was also giving me the regular lectures and how I should conduct myself. Oh, they are going to tell you how to conduct yourself. They're going to tell you, you know, what you should do, how you should do it, because they're they're molding you to be perfect for them. Like I said, when, when I would go out with him and we would be with his friend because of the work he did, it was, it was mainly guys there. So I would sit and I wouldn't say nothing. I wouldn't give none of the guys eye contact. I would just either be on my phone or I'd be like, I'm reading something, you know, unless he said something to me, I would not. I mean, and he had me trained like that. And I don't remember if we went out and I was like all in the conversation and he like gave me a lecture. I don't think that ever happened. I just kind of picked up on you know, stay in your place. You know, I'm out with him. These are his buddies. And he didn't want me giggling in their face. And I, I understand that. You know, I, I understood that because I wouldn't want I wouldn't want him out with me and my friends and he's just giggling. Like, no. So I could just kind of stay to myself. And I think the guys, they knew because, you know, whenever he would walk away, they would say something, but I would still keep to myself because I'm like, oh, they could be testing me. You know, when he come back, I don't want them to say, oh, yeah, she said something. So, you know. You have to be your own person and not allow someone to rob you of your power. Once they rob you of your power, it's so hard to get back. And with a narcissist, they have, you know, they have the tendency, they know when the power is stripped from them. Because again, they are going to give you the silent treatment and they're going to pull their attention, pull their affection. And that affection was so strong. They was love bombing you. So you, you feel like a drug, you feel like you was on drugs. And when they take it away, you're like, Oh my goodness. Like what just happened? Like, you know, you need your fix. So guess what? You going to call that narcissist and you're going to be like, okay, you know, I'm so sorry. Let's talk. I don't know what I did, you know, and you're going to make it right. And guess what? Now he got the power back in his hands. And you're going to pay for what you did. Oh, you're going to pay. Trust me. I paid. Um, Monique said, girl, I thought I was in college all over again. And he was the professor. I used. Oh, I can't say that. I used to call him the professor. I used to call him that because I would get those lectures. Like he would lecture me. I, I would be looking at him like, why? Like, man, you know, like, come on, like I'm grown, you know. I have parents. I used to look at him like, you're not my daddy. Like my daddy didn't even lecture me like that, but he will lecture me. I mean, and you better remember, I had to remember what he said in the lecture because he would quiz me. 
He will come back and he will quiz me. Oh, oh, narcissists are real smart. They think they are. He will come back and he will quiz me um, later and be like, okay, what we talked about. And he will quiz me and I would have to give him points about what we talked about so that he know that I was listening. I was a good old little student and I was listening. Um, Deanna says, super fast relationship. Honey, they will have you wrapped up so fast because they want to make sure that they're able to do what they need to do. So you like in a whirlwind, you in a whirlwind in this relationship. But I mean, it feels good because the, especially if you've been in relationships before to where, you know, you didn't have that. You didn't have the love bombing. And the love bombing is good if it's real. But with them, it's, it's, it's not it's not real. It's, it's not real. If you are tuning in, we are talking about help. I'm in love with a narcissist live on intellectual radio. And we just got done talking about the different phases of a narcissist in a relationship, which is they will take you through love bombing. They will devalue you. And then they will discard you. They will get rid of you altogether because if you're not following the program, they do not want somebody there who is not going to follow the program. Because guess what? If you get somewhere out in public and you're doing something, they do something that you don't like and then you vocal about it. Oh, you better not say nothing. You better not open your mouth. You better not even say nothing to them later about it. You just better swallow your pride and don't say nothing because they're going to let you have it. You're going to have a lecture and some. So if you are dating a, nar a narcissist right now, or if you are married to one, I would suggest you get help. I would suggest you go and get some type of counseling and try to encourage them to get counseling. But nine times out of 10 or 10 times out of 10, they're not going to get counseling because they don't think that they have a problem. They don't think that they're the problem. Remember, you're the problem. They're going to blame you they're going to put all the blame on you. So you have to make sure if this is where you want to be, you have to have an outlet to where you can, you know, get some of your feelings out, tell people how you're feeling, because that could be a lot of stress on you. It could be a lot of stress. And we know that stress can lead to disease. So if you're diseased, it can lead to disease. So you have to make sure that, you know, you're not allowing this person to um, to mess with your spirit, your aura to where you're not even yourself anymore. You, you're you not even yourself. And your friends notice, like my friends notice that, you know, you're not acting like yourself, especially when I'm around him, totally different person. You know, I'm a totally different person when I'm around him because, you know, he wants you to act this certain way. He has this or he or she, I keep saying he, but he or she, I mentioned before, is, is 75% men who are narcissists and 25% women. So it could be a man or it could be a woman. And so you you have to, you know, you have to act a certain way. They have this image to uphold and they want you to act a certain way when you're in public. You you have to make sure that you making them look good because what they want the best of the best. They want everything to be the best. They want they want to be the center of attention. So they want to have the people who everybody's going to be looking at. They want you to get the attention. They want the attention. They want you to get the attention. But, you know, you have to be like, what's up, Aisha? She was like, Aisha, I'm Stephen Curry's wife. You know, she's like, man, I want some attention, too, because Steph Curry is getting all the attention. She wasn't getting any. But, you know, it's like you have to make sure that this is where you want to be. And you have to be ready to just lose yourself. Because you're going to lose yourself with this person. You're going to lose yourself. Monique says, um, he had the nerve to tell me that I needed to have a wardrobe of evening gowns so that I could attend the black tie affairs with him. I'm like, dude, I graduated from college and don't, and don't have a need for something like that. She says, if it's so important to you, then you should buy it. And then he quit asking me for three days. I'm, they, they're going to, your clothes, they're going to make sure that when you're out, because you're representing them. So they want you to, they want you to have a certain wardrobe when you go out so that, again, they want people to look at them and you're with them. So you represent them. So they want to make sure that they're getting all the attention, no matter who else is in the room. All focus is going to be on them. So they will love bomb you. They will devalue you. And then they're going to disregard you. So what can you do? to make this relationship work. If you're going to stay in this relationship with this narcissist, then what can you do to make this relationship work? Just know that you're going to have to sacrifice a lot. 
it's going to be a lot of times that you just going to have to swallow your pride and just, and it sounds really crazy, but you're going to have to swallow your pride and you're just going to have to be like, whatever, like, you know, I'm doing this for him because I love him. Cause that's really what it is. You're doing everything for him because you love him. Well, you think you love him and you feel like, Oh, he loves me too. Um, but again, after the love bombing, he's not doing any of those things anymore. He's not, he's not texting you and calling you and spending all that time with you. He just did that in the love bombing stage. He's not doing all of that, right? He just did it to get you. But he, but it's just like any man, he's territorial. So the first thing that you could do to make that relationship work is know that you just be prepared to sacrifice. Um, again, he's going to gaslight you think you're going to be thinking, um, are you crazy? You know, you're going to be taking the blame for stuff. So the second thing that you can do is just know that you're going to be tapped out. Again, be prepared to lose yourself. You are going to be tapped out because you're going to be so tired of just, it's just all about him. Everything is all about him or her. And you really are not, you're really not going to have time to really, you know, think about yourself and do things for yourself, but you better be on point. If if you want to go somewhere and do something, you better be on point. You got to be ready. So number three of how to make the relationship work is um, realize that a narcissist don't trust nobody. <laughs> they only trust themselves. So there are going to be times when they are going to be, they'll go through your phone. You know, they're going to, they're going to question you. They may have somebody following you. They're going to question everything you're doing because they don't believe you. They only trust themselves and everybody else, liars. Number four is you have to feed his ego. Remember, our narcissists, they love attention. They they want, they like admiration. They want all of that. So you got to make sure if you're with a narcissist that you are feeding his ego. If you don't feed the ego, He's going to go get somebody to feed that ego. You got to make sure that you are feeding his ego. So on a daily basis, several times a day, which we should we should be um, feeding our own person's ego anyway, but not overboard. With a narcissist, it's overboard. So, you know, when he wake up in the morning, you got, and sometimes you turn it around to make it seem like, you know, um, you try to add yourself into it. You know, you're like, you know, babe, I'm so happy that you chose me. Like, you know, you just make me so happy. <laughs> And it sound crazy. It do. It sound really crazy. But, you know, when he does things, you'd be like, you know, if, if he's somewhere and he's doing something, he's doing his work or something, you'd be like, you know, but I don't know what they would do without you because, you know, you just, you make, you everything is just, you make everything. You know, you just have to make him feel like he's a man, which again, we should be doing that anyway. But with a narcissist, they needed more. You have to really feed their ego and they don't know when you, they know when you lie, they know when it's not genuine. So you got to really find opportunities. If you're going to stay in a relationship, you got to find opportunities to compliment him and to feed um, his or her ego. You have to make sure oh, Monique is writing paragraphs. <laughs> Monique, when was, when was you in your, your relationship? She was in her early twenties and he was in his forties. Oh, wow. So you was really, you was one of those, um, he loved you because you was one of those um, people he could really mow. When you're in your 20s, you know, a nurse, and he's he in his 40s, so he done had time to, you know, perfect some of his craft. So by the time he got to you, Monique, he was like, okay, I, I know what to do with her. Wow. Okay, let me see if I can read this. Monique says, we were in the mall one time and he got upset because a guy my age at the time, I was in my early 20s and he was in his 40s, was talking to me. Oh, girl, you know, you can't talk. You can't. You with a narcissist. You don't have no other conversations with nobody unless they told you to have their conversation. How are you going to be in the mall having a conversation, Monique? So Monique said she was having the guy was talking to her and she replied to the guy's comment. I mean, OK, that's that's common kind of courtesy. He said we were flirting with each other and in his face. Ooh, I just wonder what happened after that Monique. She said, which was not the case. Um, he asked her, he he asked her a legitimate platonic question, and her reply was consistent with what he said. Um, we immediately had to leave the mall. He stopped talking to me and accused me of being in the wrong. Oh, he ghosted her for five days. They good at that. Girl, that's why I said when I was around his friends, I didn't talk. 
I was either in my phone or I had something to read. And when he, if he left the, for some reason and came back, I still didn't talk to them. Like I would still keep my head down or whatever I was doing because I didn't want that because I knew that that would be coming. And no matter if you said something, you were in the wrong. Even if you just, if he stepped on your toe and you was like, ouch, he was like, excuse me. He like, okay, why, why are you talking to him? What was that about? And then you see people around me. They know me. You're trying to make me look bad. You're trying to put me in a bad spot. Like, it, it's a lot of work. If It's a lot of work to be in a relationship with a narcissist. Like I said, you got to be prepared to lose yourself. You have to be prepared to um, compliment this person all the time. You got to be prepared for him not, he or she not to trust you. And the next one, uh, we talked about feed the ego. So next one is you have to set boundaries. So if you're going to be in this relationship with this narcissist, you got to set boundaries. You have to, but you got to catch it at the beginning. So if you don't catch it in the beginning, then it's too late. So doing that love bombing stage, which it have to be like right after the love bombing stage, because he ain't going to do it during that stage. So right after the love bombing stage, when he starts devaluing you or blaming you for something, you got to check him real fast. You got to check it. Okay, babe, no, see, no, you're not going to talk to me that way. I'm I'm not going to be talked to that way. You know, I respect you. You respect me. But no, you don't, don't talk to me that way. You got to check it real fast. Or you got to let them know. You No, I'm not to blame for that. I'm not going to allow you to blame. No. And then you have to do it in a way. You have to talk in a way that's not threatening to him. Because, and don't raise your voice, that's not threatening to him. But you got to do it to make it seem like, like women do anyway, like it's your idea, you know, like you catering to him, like you making this, you making this, this change for him. And it's just going to help. It's going to help us. Um, Monique says, I put up with this for a year until I got a clue. Praise God. <laughs> it's crazy because when you're in it, it's like, oh, she said it was 20 years ago. Wow. Wow. Mine was a little, mine was, uh, mine was about. Seven years ago, maybe. So, okay, so you have to establish establish boundaries, but you got to do it really fast. Because if you don't, if you don't check them, you got to do it in the beginning. Like with any relationship, if you want to be treated a certain way and they do something, you just got to say, "Hey, no, that's that's not. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna tolerate that." So just put your foot down early. Don't wait two, three years later. Now you want to? Oh, we we need to talk. I don't want you doing this. He gonna be like, "What? I've been doing this for two years. You got a problem? Oh, you talking to somebody else? Somebody told you that I treat you wrong? Oh, well, go be with them." Don't don't do that. Okay, number six is avoid embarrassment. And I don't know if I talked about this already. Um, if you're out in public and y'all get into an argument or he does something to make you upset, you don't say nothing. You got to wait until you get home. A narcissist loves people who are loyal. He wants somebody that's loyal. He don't want anybody that's going to rat him out and try to tell people, you know, how, what he's doing and how he's treating you. He wants somebody that's going to be loyal to him. And that's going to cover his crap that he does so that people will continue to think that he's superior and um, he or she is, you know, just, you know, they, they the stuff. So you have to make sure when you're out that you're not going to embarrass them. You're not going to start an argument to where you, your voice is loud and you calling him out of his name and, you know, you're not making her look bad. You got to make sure that you are just like the perfect little partner while you're out with him because he don't want to draw that type of attention to him. He wants attention, but not that type of attention. So you got to make sure that you're not drawing that type of attention. Um, and if something, if, if something escalates, then you got to be like, okay, baby, let's, let's talk about this when we get home. Or you got to um, quickly be like, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. You know, and try to deal with it when you get home, because <laughs> if you embarrass, if you embarrass a narcissist out in front of his people, you're going to pay. And those people are going to see you pay. So you don't want to do that. So at all costs, just try not to get into something. Sometimes you can't avoid stuff, but just try not to get into, you know, some type of argument. You know, I used to just give him the eye. Like if he was doing something, like I would just give him the eye. Like, okay, that look. And he knows what that, he knew what that look meant. And he would do the same for me. And then I was just like, calm down or he would. But I was never the type of person that would try to like embarrass him out. 
you know, in public because of the type of job he had, I, would, I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't want it done to me. So I wouldn't do it to him. Um, Monique says, my, <laughs> my clueless, but wanted to please him. Yes, that's what we do. We, because of that, all that love, love by me, we want to continue to please this person. She said, I thought that he was handsome. I told y'all they was attractive, successful. They are, they on the top, they at the top of the game and established. She said, I think that I was dealing with abandonment issues and that's how they get you. Cause we are missing something. That's how they get you. She said, she said, which is why I let go, let it go on for so long. And that's how it be, because we feel like you jumping ahead of me, Monique. You jumping ahead of my notes. So, And that's how it be when, you know, we be in a relationship with them. Sometimes we do be missing stuff. And I'm telling you, doing that love bombing stage, they're meeting all of those needs. They they doing everything. And you just like, wow, I never had it this good before. Okay, so number eight is just find the good in the relationship. Just try to find the good in the re no, I skipped. Okay, number seven. Okay, just keep number eight as number seven. Try to find the good in the relationship. Whatever that is, you know, whatever you guys can have some sort of peace. Just because a narcissist is routine. Like they like routine. They strictly like don't try to change up the routine on them. They don't like it. so they they're routine. So just try to find something that's that's good in the relationship. Like um him and I used to do um, puzzles and, you know, cause he was all about, you know, the brain and expanding the brain and, you know, so we would sit and we would do puzzles and that was just like the commonest thing for, for us. You know, I didn't really like it. I knew he did. I just did it cause he liked it. And, you know, and it, and it helps you expand your vocabulary and, you know, and just kind of like think quick and it helps with Alzheimer's if you're using your brain to do, you know, puzzles and stuff like that. It helps, you know, with, with, um, you know, those diseases. So, you know, so I did it. Okay, so number seven is understand the abuse cycle. So if you can understand the abuse cycle, then you can kind of know when stuff is happening. So the abuse cycle is um, first you feel the feeling of being threatened. So you feel threatened and then he abuses others. He becomes the victim and then he feels empowered. Why? Because he's going to get He's going to get the power back. So if you if you kind of know, OK, so if something's happening to where, you know, something happens to where, you know, he feels threatened. And then once he feels that way, that's the first that's the first phase of the abuse cycle. Then it comes. He's abusing others, which is normally you. And abuse could be emotional abuse. Normally, normally. Narcissist does emotional abuse, which is still abuse. It's just like domestic abuse. It's just emotional. Is financial financial abuse is is abuse. Spiritual abuse is abuse. Um, physical abuse is abuse. So a narcissist normally does emotional abuse, and then so then the next phase is becoming a the victim. They become the victim, and then you end up. They blame it on you, and then you take the blame, and then the feeling of empowerment. Ah, they got their power back. So if you could understand when those four things are happening and you just kind of like relax and don't react and don't, you know, get all crazy, then you could kind of navigate through the relationship is understanding the abuse cycle. If you're planning on staying in that relationship, and then you'll know what's happening when it's happening. And when you think about relationships, think about like your parents or whoever, you know, raised you. You think about um, they set the blueprint. For your relationships, whatever relationships you encounter later, um, they set the blueprint for it. So how you're gonna act in those relationships. So if you had a relationship at home to where maybe your your father was a narcissist or your mom was a narcissist, then nine times out of ten, you probably picked up some of them ways and there you are out in the street, you know, treating people that way. You know, you might have been at home to where your parents were like you know, inflate your ego, you know, which is, you know, you're supposed to, you know, make kids, you know, feel like they can do anything. And then they took it, you know, a narcissist take it a step further. So as parents, we have to make sure that we are setting a good example for our kids to make, you know, to get them a good foundation so that when they do go out in the world, you know, they're not treating people as narcissists do. Narcissists is all about control. It's all about control. If they don't have the control, if they don't have power, 
then you're going to pay. If you did something to shift that power, then you best believe that you're going to pay for that. They're all about being in control. So if they're in a room or they're in a conversation and the control shifts, they're no longer a part of that conversation. They, <laughs> it sounds crazy, but they want to be in control. And if they feel like that they're not, then guess what? They remove themselves. They're not trying to be a part of it. Again, a narcissist is very charming. We, we heard it from Monique. He's very charming. She's very attractive. They they make sure that they get the strong people. So just say if you, you feel like you're a strong woman, guess what? That narcissist is coming after you. Why? Because it's a challenge for him to break you down. Once he break you down and mess with your self-esteem, then he feel like he has conquered something. So they're going to always go after the people, the women or the men who think that they're the strongest. So in my opinion, um, if you feel like you want to break up with a narcissist, again, I said, do it cold turkey, do the silent treatment, cut off all communication. Do not, because once they start talking to you again, they're going to drag you back in. Oh, I just want to, let's just meet for, for coffee. You're going to meet for coffee. And then two hours later, y'all going to be sleeping together. Don't. I'm telling you, just if you serious about not being with that person again, then you have to make sure that you cut off all communications. Do it cold turkey. And you just have to, if you got to go get help, go get help and, and talk to somebody so that you won't go back to that situation. A narcissist, um, I talked about the silent treatment. They'll give you the silent treatment when they feel like they have lost control. If they lose control, you're getting the silent treatment or we talked about ghosts and they're going to ghost you. Why? Because they are setting up the um, pattern for you to contact them so that they can, the power shifts back into their hands. Um, they are, we talked about them being attractive, them being confident. And um, Monique talked about it was something lacking. So it's something lacking in us that attracts us to that narcissist. It's something, some type of void inside of us that, you know, that's not filled and that has not been filled in any other, rela any other relationship until we get with that narcissist. And we, and we just push everything aside and we just kind of like cater to this person. We give them all of our time. If they call us and say, hey, come pick me up from somewhere. You could have been just um, had heart surgery two days ago. They call you and say, hey, um, I need to ride to the airport. And you say, um, now they didn't come visit you while you was in the hospital. They didn't even come to your surgery, you know, because they just, they don't really care about you that way. So they're not, you know, they'll find an excuse why they couldn't come. And they will make sure if you can't come get them, if you can't come get them, you are going to pay. What you better say is, you better say, babe, I, I just had surgery. I really want to come get you. But guess what? I'm going to set up your Uber and I'm going to pay for it. And the Uber, they're going to come get you. All right. And uh, I'll be ready to pick you up when you come back. But don't you say, because if you, especially if you say, oh, but I'm busy, honey. I can't do it right now. I'm busy. That means that you're not catering to them. They don't have, you don't have time for them. And they want to feel superior. They want to feel like they're a center of attention. So if you're saying you can't do something for them, then guess what? That means you're putting the shine back on yourself. It's all about you. And they don't want that. Ooh, that's a lot. I know this is a lot. Okay. So if you, these are words really quick that you never say to a narcissist, a narcissist okay? Never tell them that they're a loser. If y'all argue with, do not let those words come up, okay? You will eat those words. You never tell them that you don't believe in them. And that's this is really with anybody. Again, I just talked about being busy. You never tell them that you're busy. You always offer another solution so that they can get done whatever it is that they need done. If they call you and they left a voicemail or a text message, don't tell them that you didn't get it. Don't say, oh, I didn't get the message. That means that you're not really catering to them. you doing something else because now you don't miss them. What if they needed you? What if they were stranded or something? And the last thing is you never tell them no. You never. Those are the words that you don't say to them. You reword it some other way, but you don't tell them no. I, I'm not doing that. You will pay. Trust me, you will pay. I know that was a lot of information, you guys, but... 
help. I am in love with a narcissist and thank God I am no longer in love with a narcissist. And if you are in love with a narcissist, you can be like Monique, you can be like Deanna and you can get out of that relationship. If you um, just joined in the show, be kind of rewind. There's so many different pointers and so many different phases and signs and symptoms that you can look for it to see if you are in that type of relationship. You can take your power back and you can get out and have a peace of mind. You don't, there are plenty of people out here where you can have a relationship with to where it could be about the both of you and not just about one person. Yes, we want to cater to the person that we with, but it should be 50-50. It should not be 100 and then you're over here lacking in everything. So I'm going to leave y'all with this. Words of wisdom, it says, the only way to win with a toxic person is not to play. So join me next Monday right here at 6 p.m. on Intellectual Radio. As always, thank you for tuning in to Warriors Talk with author and founder Lady Rochelle, where we are changing lives one warrior at a time. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to this week's edition. Thank you, Monique and Deanna. I appreciate Thank you for the likes, you guys. I appreciate it. I hope that you guys enjoyed the show and you got some good information. Follow at Warriors Talk, the number one on all social media outlets.